students we are going to do part 2 of the lesson the living world for standard 6 chapter 2 hey this video was made just for you do remember to like share and subscribe now try this activity hold your hand to your nose okay and feel your breath then hold your hand to your chest and see your heart thumping okay so when you hold your hand to your nose you feel how you are inhaling and exhaling air as well as when you hold your hand to your chest you find how your heart is pumping that is it gives that lub dub lub dub sound isn't it also observe a dog you'll find that the belly that is the stomach of the dog moving isn't it so it goes even though it is sleeping over there its stomach is moving up and down you know that living things need oxygen to breathe so inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide that is we when we inhale air we are inhaling oxygen inside our body and then carbon dioxide is produced which we exhale out so this inhalation and exhalation goes on in our body and this is called respiration so respiration is a characteristic of living thing so it is one of the feature of living things so if anything respires respires if anything respires that is inhales oxygen and exhales carbon dioxide or in plants we have seen they inhale carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen so we come to know that they are breathing so respiration is a characteristic of living things now most of the animals including we human beings use lungs for breathing but there are other animals like the fish the snake the frog that they use different parts of their body or different organs to breathe now what about plants how do they breathe we have seen that plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen now how is this possible for the plants to do in the leaves they have small openings very very tiny tiny very minute so these are called microscopic pores this holes they have it in the stems and leaves so they breathe through their stems and leaves now we consume a lot of food what happens to the food where does it go what about the unused part of the food how is it converted in our body so waste substances that are formed during the many processes that take place in the bodies of animals so including human beings also so these are called excreta okay so the unused part of the food that is the food that we consume and the body doesn't require that is it takes all the nutrients and then the leftover part of the food is called the excreta now this is eliminated from our body and is called excretion so all animals have specific organs for excretion now we often find sticky substances that come out of the bark of the of a tree or from a branches of the tree so what is the sticky, sticky substance so this is nothing but the excreta that is the unwanted part of the plant or the tree which it throws it out so this is their way of excretion that is throwing out the unused part of the food or the nutrients that they have taken inside so that is how they will excrete now try this activity take a transparent plastic bag and tie it over a leaf of a plant as shown in the picture observe it after 6 to 7 hours now what do you see you will find tiny droplets of water on the bag okay so this means that some substances or from the leaves has been thrown out from the plant so this tells us that even plants excrete water in the form of water vapor so this tells us that even plants excrete not only animals but plants also throw out the unwanted part of the food that they have produced 
Now, some plants we know that they shed their leaves in the specific season. That is, during the autumn season, they will shed their leaves. All the leaves fall off. So. Uh, when the leaves fall off, all the waste substances stored in the leaves of the plants also get shed with the leaves. So, that is another way how the uh, plants or the trees throw away the unwanted food substances or the unwanted things that from the plant. Now, let's observe and discuss the following. Have you experienced this? Do you remember what happened immediately after the following actions? That is, light flashed suddenly into your eyes. Suddenly, you felt a pin prick. That, that is, a pin pricking you. The leaves of the mimosa plant were touched at sunset. Lamps on the street or courtyard are lit and insects gather around the lamps. So, why do you think all these actions happened? So, why do you think all these actions happened? Now, this is because of another characteristics of living things, which is responsiveness to stimuli and movement. Now, what do you mean by the word stimuli? Stimuli is a plural form of stimulus. Now, stimulus means any action or event or a person or thing, which because of which there was a reaction or there was a response to it. So, this characteristic is found only in uh, living things. So, therefore, you will not find it in non-living things. That is responding to something or someone or some event. So, this is called the responsiveness to stimuli. Now, you must have noticed that if you suddenly enter a cow shed, the cows and buffaloes stand up, begin to move. One or two may even start to move. These are all movements. Now, this is because they are reacting to a stimulus and here the stimulus is you. So, when you enter, they are reacting to it. They are fearing. Cows are very, very timid animals. They get scared very easily. So, they get, they are, you know, getting scared of you. They think that maybe their life is in danger or something. So, they are reacting to that action of you entering. So, this is called a responsiveness to stimuli. Now use your brain power. In each of the examples given above, what is the stimulus and what is the response? Everywhere in each of the examples, there was a stimulus and there was a response. So, you have to note down what was the stimulus and what was the response. Now, what is the main difference between the movements of plants and animals. We have seen that plants as well as animals move and they respond to stimulus. So, what is the main difference between the two? To check your answers, you may visit our website at jkacademypro.com. Now, let's learn more about this responsiveness to stimuli and movement. Now, if a creeper plant is kept in the courtyard, it leans towards a support. Okay, so it will try to find a support. So it will move towards a support. So that is called the responsiveness of the creeper plant to a stimulus. Now, in the same way, a potted plant placed in a window grows towards the sunlight. So if you have kept it little inside, it will start moving and going outside the window towards sunlight. So it means that plants to show movement. Now, living things move on their own accord. Nobody is moving it. So, all living things, whether it's plants, whether it's animals, even plants, you know, they are moving towards sunlight. They are moving towards the support. So, even the roots go deep into the soil in, in search of nutrients, in search of water. So, that is also a stimuli that happens in plants as well as animals. So, all living things show this characteristics of responding to a stimuli. So, the movement or the change taking place in a living thing at such a time is the response to a stimulus. So, any change that takes place because of some event, some action. So, that is called the responsing, response to the particular movement or particular action. An event that occurs in our surrounding is a stimulus. So, any action, any event that happens in our surrounding 
is called a stimulus and the ability of the living things to respond to a stimulus so any movement that happens any action that happens any event that happens and we respond to it any in any way we respond maybe we may respond physically or may we may respond you know uh by thinking about something so if there is a lecture going on and you are listening to it so you respond by thinking about it so that is also a a, a, a responsiveness to stimuli so the ability of living things to respond to a stimuli is called their responsiveness to stimuli okay so this is a characteristic that we find only in living things do solve the textual exercise and to check the answers for the textual exercise and for more free worksheets please visit our website at www.jkacademypro.com end of part 2 for a complete lesson do watch all the other parts